is this a bad omen for Brendan? Because I never saw this happening. I'm not going to lie. I was surprised when I saw this happening. Or I saw this being confirmed via drama alert. Look at this. Catherine McBroom announces divorce from Austin. So it sounds like she's the one filing divorce. And again, most of you won't know who these people are, but they're like well-known family channel um, people, Austin and, and Catherine McBroom. And this guy is known. Again, I, I remember when I used to first get into like, um, big up Illusionary Commission, I appreciate you. Everyone I love died of COVID friends and neighbors. Yeah, exactly. Basically. Come on, man. That, that shit was real. I don't know what that guy's talking about. Big up you. I appreciate that, brother. Um, I remember when I was first when I was first getting into like drama YouTube channels. I don't really watch them too much nowadays, but these guys are all the time. Every you know they were featured on those channels every single week because of some scandal or whatever. But one of the biggest things around them was the fact that this Austin guy was cheating on this woman like on the fucking weekly basis. It was fucking crazy how often he'd fucking cheat on her, and all these girls would come up and obviously you know say it happened. They would obviously confirm stories and some of them would reach out directly to the woman, um, Catherine, and she'd deny it. And she kind of denied it. You know what's funny? She denied it the same way that Brendan's wife does. I remember that somebody posted a picture, a screenshot of somebody reaching out to Brendan's wife when the first kind of cheating things happened. And she was like, oh, something like prove it, prove it or something. You know, you're just talking, whatever. It was, it was very competitive and very like dismissive. And I think I remember seeing screenshots or videos of her saying the same thing. Like she was almost kind of like insulted that someone would suggest that would question and kind of slut shame the girls involved. It was very strange. So essentially you kind of felt like, okay, cool. You know, sometimes guys get lucky and they end up hooking up with a woman who just doesn't give a fuck and turns a blind eye and you can get away with murder. So you kind of left it as it is. I think people kind of stopped bothering because, you know, she clearly didn't care. And he clearly went to put his dick anywhere. So it kind of was what it was. But now all of a sudden, I guess something's changed. And now it seemed like she's finally had enough. She's actually had enough. And she's, you know, and deciding to kind of get divorced. And she's the one that initiated it from what we've seen here. So I wonder if this is like a bad, I wonder if this is like um, an indication that maybe for Brendan, if he doesn't get his act together, it could be over for him too. Because I'm of the thinking, again, maybe you guys disagree but I'm of the thinking, I don't think Brendan's wife is ever going anywhere. Mainly because of the lifestyle. The lifestyle that Brendan affords her is just fantastic. She can't get that anywhere else, unfortunately. Especially because of where she lives and, you know, the, the kind of the culture around aging and shit. If she was ever to leave Brendan, she'd be what? Like in her what? Just approaching her mid-30s, late 30s. She'd have three kids and stuff. In LA, you might as well be 50 like that. You know what I mean? You might as well be 50 years old. You might as well be 60 years old if you're in your late 30s with three kids. You know what I mean? Like, no one wants you like that. So you kind of have to go and pivot somewhere else, which she's probably not going to do because she likes the LA lifestyle. So I'm of the thinking that she would never leave anyway because of that. And I also think, you know, for lack of a better word, and not to stereotype, not to stereotype, not to stereotype, but I think apart from the aging, which doesn't matter really, it shouldn't really matter. But I think in LA, unfortunately, age probably is one of the main factors, especially someone like her that gets work done and stuff. You always trying to look young anyway. So you're not really embracing your age in the first place. But I think as a stereotype, I would assume similar to like, you know, African women. I think Mexican ladies, especially, or Latin women, maybe Hispanic women, they probably, they probably are more willing to put up with a lot more shit than your regular kind of like, you know, Western person. I think they just put up with more shit. So the guys can get away with more. So maybe it's not just a lifestyle. Maybe it's not because Brendan buys her Balenciaga and she doesn't have to work and she drives a Lambo truck. Maybe that's not the reason. Maybe the reason is because she's Mexican and she's maybe religious as well. That might be a point, right? She might be super Catholic or super, you know, Christian, whatever, something along those kind of lines. They take their vows seriously. Um, they don't want to break them. Um, unless it's you know n completely necessary they always try and quote unquote work through it or turn a blind eye or bury their head in the sand but maybe this is an indication that it that everyone's got a breaking point maybe even the most hispanic of latin or fucking mexi cali woman in the world maybe even she has a breaking point maybe she's like you know what enough is enough i can't I can't. Maybe they all have a breaking point because I was surprised to see this, to be fair, especially her initiating the divorce. I'm not going to lie. So it's courtesy of her um, Instagram account. The caption says as follows. As I start this new year, I will challenge myself in ways that I've never done before in 2024. 
Will, will, will 2024 will be the year of transformative change and with this taking place one of the steps in my journey is a difficult decision to leave my marriage we have mutually agreed to divorce and we will part amicably our paths as a couple have shifted has created challenges that are that are irreconcilable this decision comes with a sh very heavy heart as heartbreaking as this is i also feel liberated I have spent the past few years prioritizing my children and honoring my commitment to my family. And all the while I seem to be losing myself and my own personal happiness. Our, um, this, this does the personal happiness thing when you got three kids is fucking funny, isn't it? Surely you should suspend that until you've brought them up. Well, I don't know, whatever, 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 whatever. Our main priority will be to stay united as the parents and to continue creating a stable, happy and loving commitment with our children. Thank you to all for supporting us, for supporters, for giving me the safe space to be able to use my voice and share our love. I love you, you all so much. I'm beyond grateful and the support we've received. You are throughout the years as a couple and Austin, you are my best friend and that will never change. I wonder what broker. I wonder what was a breaking thing. I wonder what happened. Was it a, did she find some lip gloss? Was there a pair of knickers somewhere? Was it a text? Something on the iCloud? I wonder what finally made her think, you know what? I can't do this anymore. I can't. Because the funny thing is like women like this, they will put up with a lot, but when they're done, there's no turning back. That's the thing. Guys don't realize if, when you take a bunch of women like this, that give, give you so, so many chances when they're done, there's no turning back. Like when they're over you, they're over you for good. So Austin's kind of fucked here. You know what I mean? If he ever thinks he's going to be able to double back when she's, when they, when, when women like this start talking about, you know, 2024 be a year of transformative change. Like, you know, don't be surprised if she comes out with a new haircut. She starts wearing different clothes and shit. You know what I mean? Like she's going to change completely. Like she's going to be like, look, I need to be rid of his juju. So yeah. Um, I wonder if this is an indication. I wonder if this is an indication of what happened. I wonder if this is indica I wonder if uh, Brendan is taking notes. If I'm Papa, I'll take notes because, you know, LA as well, divorces, the fucking, you know, uh, what you have to pay in alimony and shit is no joke. It's, it's a bit wild, isn't it? People say that anyway, right? It's a bit wild that the first thing people talk about when it comes to like relationships in a place like California is making sure that you don't get divorced so you don't have to pay anyone any money it's like bro why not why not focus on being a good husband <laughs> why not focus on being a good family man this idea that you should just you know make sure your marriage is okay so you don't have to pay <laughs> is so fucking toxic honestly that kind of mindset is so toxic really fucking is to focus more on that than anything else is so fucking toxic um but yeah this might be a bad omen for papa so maybe if he doesn't take that woman seriously and he doesn't honor his Guadalajara princess, things could get dicey for that guy. Things could get utterly, 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 utterly dicey. But hey, maybe he doesn't care also. Maybe he wants to, you know, he wants it to get dicey. Maybe he wants to fuck the chigs. You know, he wants to fuck all the chigs. He wants to open the portal of his face and his mouth to new possibilities. <laughs> 